Hey, what's good, YouTube? Today we're gonna react to Jimmy. Um, they should have never let this happen. Obviously, you're gonna be talking about the, you know, Giannis and Dame trade. So let's see, um, Jimmy take on it. But let's get into the reaction. You see something interesting? Here's the chart Talk to of me. every single teammate Giannis Antetokounmpo has played with in the NBA. That's every player in every season for the past 10 years. Okay. And they're all plotted based on how good they were in terms of box plus minus and win shares. Now, over the years, Giannis has played with a lot of guys. OJ Mayo, Jabari Parker. He played with Jason Terry for two seasons. Kind of a weird overlap. Yeah, that is weird. His best teammates have all came in the last few seasons. Brooke Lopez, Eric Bledsoe, Chris Middleton, Drew Holiday. There's some good seasons in here by some good players. And Giannis has made the most of it. And then... There's his new teammate, Damian, Damian Leonard, who will easily be the best player he's ever played with. Facts. The NBA's got a new super team, and right now, they're the favorites to win it all. They are the favorites right My now. first pick going to be Damian Leonard. But is it a super team, though? Today's video is sponsored by CP. I don't think it's a super team, though. Season upon us and basketball right around the corner. Save yourself the time and hassle of looking for good tickets and killer deals. All right, shout out to Jimmy for that sponsor. Shout out, uh, check out his seat geek. As a Blazers fan, I've seen some dark days. Days I wouldn't wish on my worst A lot enemy. of dark days. I saw my team rally their days. way to the conference finals for the first time in two decades just to get swept and never return. Damn. I had to watch the player that we passed up on turn into an all-time great. Damn. While the guy we picked couldn't even stay on the court. Damn. I watched Brandon Roy blossom into a star and then retire literally 50 games later due to injuries. Damn. This is enough to Brandon Roy was insane. nice too. And then the chosen one. Our loyal king, the one glimmer of hope in a bleak and desolate franchise, just packs up and leaves to the Bucks, and we get stuck with DeAndre yeah. Ayton, a guy we aren't even gonna keep, a rookie, and a seventh grader. And I'm not even sure where the Bucks came from. The Blazers and the Heat were stuck in one of the weirdest, most drawn-out stalemates for the last three months. Yes. And out of nowhere, the Bucks came and picked him up for actually a reasonable price. And as sad as I am to see Dame go, I'm happy for the guy. Despite everything he's given to the Blazers, the organization never quite put him in a position to win. The Facts. man has been in the league for 11 seasons and has played with only one All-Star. That's Even wild. Even that was nearly a decade ago. In fact, throughout his career, Dame has made seven All-NBA teams, a feat only 46 players throughout the history of the NBA have accomplished. And out of these players, only 13 of them never won a championship in the NBA. Damn. And these 13 players, whether active or retired, are all regarded in the same dismissive fashion. All-time greats no ring, never man. won a ring. Only yeah. four of them are active today. Chris Paul, James Harden, Russell Westbrook, and Damian Lillard. And all four of them have reached the same point in their careers. Don't be the guy who had a stellar career with all the awards and achievements. With no ring. No championship to show for it. Yep. And so after three months of uncertainty, I think this is about the best case scenario, not only for Lillard, but for Giannis and the Bucks. I agree. In fact, this trade was actually foreshadowed last season. During the 2023 All-Star Draft selection over every other All-Star reserve, Giannis picked Damian Lillard with his first pick. Back in 2022, Dame was asked who he would play with if he could choose any active player. His answer was Giannis. Well, Giannis. Fast forward 18 months, and they both got their wish. Yep. So now that he's on the Bucks, and they both got a teammate that far exceeds anyone else they've ever Yo, played. this man Dame was greeted with a fucking parade, bro, when he landed in fucking uh, um, Milwaukee. Hey, this man was welcome with a fucking parade, and what's it called? The Bucks already got his jersey uh, to be fucking made and shit, bro. Like, quick as hell. Their wish. So now that he's on the Bucks, and they both got a teammate that far exceeds anyone else they've ever played with, how good is this duo, actually? We've seen countless pairs of superstars get hyped up with grand expectations just to fall short and achieve essentially nothing together. But if history has shown us anything, this duo is bound to do something great. In terms of box plus minus, there have only been six duos in the history of the NBA that were as good individually as Giannis and Dame are. And out of those six duos, four of them went on to win the NBA championship that season. The only mm. duos that didn't were Harden and CP3 in 2018, who lost to the eventual champs in the yeah, conference finals, who and Durant won. and Westbrook, who were one game away from making the finals. History has shown us that when two players of this caliber pair up, it usually results in a championship. 
or at worst, a game or two away from the finals. We are looking at potentially one of the best duos of the last few decades. Last season, Dame averaged 32 points, 7 assists, and 4 rebounds a game. Now, those aren't just historically great numbers. That's a stat line that only Michael Jordan, James Harden, and Luka Damn. Doncic have ever achieved in the history of the NBA. Even crazier, Dame did all of this on record high efficiency. And last season, Giannis put up 31 points, 11 rebounds, and 5 assists per game. A stat line that hasn't been achieved since Will Chamberlain did it Damn. nearly 60 years ago. We all know hey, just how my MVP. Is, but I think spending the last decade in the shadow of arguably the greatest point guard ever has made Dame one of the most underrated stars in that the That is game. true. Both of them are coming off of historically great seasons. We haven't seen a pair like this since KD joined Steph and the Warriors back in 2017. In fact, the last time in modern NBA history, two volume scorers of this caliber paired up was never. Over the last 50 years, there hasn't been a single duo that averaged at least 30 points per game and then played together in the following season. Not Kevin Durant and James Harden, Damn. not Curry and Durant, not LeBron and Wade, not even Kobe and Shaq. But it's not just how dominant Giannis and Dame are, it's the fact that their games perfectly complement one another. Individually, defenses are forced to scheme against Dame and Giannis in polar opposite ways. Bro, I'm telling you, man, that Dame and Giannis pick and roll is going to be dangerous. That shit going to be unstoppable, man. Individually, defenses are forced to scheme against Dame and Giannis in polar opposite ways. But together, there's not a team in the league who has the defensive personnel to cover the deep they ball don't. and the pick and roll at the same time. The post. Just think, every single attempt at creating a superstar tandem in recent years involves two players that usually have similar strengths and weaknesses. Right. As good as Kyrie and Durant were, their games didn't complement one another. Kawhi and PG are great individually, but as a whole, their skill sets are far too similar to create a real dynamic offense. Most of the time, just taking turns on who's going to get the next possession. Yep. Even LeBron and AD are two oversized forwards who tend to play away from the basket and dominate possessions one turn at a time. For the exact opposite reason, this is why I think the duo of Jamal Murray and Nikola Jokic work so well. Two completely different, but compatible, play stops. Aside from Murray, who isn't quite a superstar, and Jokic, the last time we saw a duo that was made up of two megastars with complementary skills and positions was two decades ago with Shaq and Kobe. Shaq. Damian Lillard's demand to be traded wasn't some breach of loyalty. It was an attempt to regain control of his career and earn a real chance at winning like many others before him have done. How many all-time greats put their loyalty first and foremost and paid the price because of it? Guys like Reggie Miller, Dominic Wilkins, Patrick Ewing, generational Facts. talents With no whose rings, careers man. get lost in the shuffle because they never climbed to the top of the mountain. Yep. They never overcame the final obstacle and won an NBA championship. It's almost like all the all-star selections and big performances, and playoff wins become an afterthought or some yep. sort of relegated achievement because the ultimate goal was never achieved. Is it better to stay with one organization with hopes that things will eventually work out despite things never quite working out? Or after years of holding up your end of the deal, is it better to finally do what's best for you and put yourself in a position to win? Well, the answer lies with the players who did put themselves first. Yep. In the mid-2000s, Kevin Garnett's incredible talents were being flushed down the drain in Minnesota. Facts. And so he said enough is enough and went and got to Boston, a ring. A move that changed the course of his career and legacy. If Kevin Durant never left OKC, we may not know him as a two-time champion in finals MVP, but rather another generational talent who could never quite get it done. That's Even true. LeBron James all made the decision to leave the franchise that drafted them for an organization that actually gave them a chance at winning a title. Because loyalty and fans and accolades aside, above all, every player wants to lift that trophy above their head and be crowned a champion. Something that was never going to happen with Damon Portland. So what do y'all think? Is this duo truly the favorites to win this year's title? Or are we getting ahead of ourselves like we've done countless times before in the past? Are Dame and Giannis a real match made for winning? Or is this team going to be just another failed attempt at combining talents in hopes that it yields something great? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. And as always, until next time.
Now, another great video from Jimmy, but I definitely think that uh, Giannis and Dane definitely the favorite for next season. But um, just before I record this video, Drew Holiday got traded to the fucking Celtics now. So it's like, goddamn. So now the Celtics now got, uh, let me see, Drew Holiday, Jalen Brown, Jason Tatum, Porzingis, and Al Horford. Okay, they have to lose um, Robert Williams and someone else. I forgot exactly who. And some picks. But they was able to get Drew Holiday now. So that's going to be interesting. Okay. The Bucks against the Celtics is going to be so interesting, bro. Because, like, oh, yeah. And they gave up Malcolm Brogdon. And they gave him Malcolm Brogdon. Which, which I think is a good trade for the Celtics. Because, like, bro, Malcolm Bro Brogdon is, like, injury prone and shit. So good trade. They basically just traded two injury prone players type shit, which is wild. But I'm... But it's kind of bad that they lost uh, Time Lord because, like, bro, he's a great defensive center. And it's like, he would have been great coming off the bench for him. But, hey, it is what it is. They were able to get Drew Holiday instead. But, hey, that's going to be interesting. That's going to be interesting for sure. Because now the, uh, what's it called? Celtic star lineup is, like, defensively, they should be insane, bro. Like, but I'm not sure how they're going to be able to handle, like, a Giannis and Dame, like, you know, you know, pick and roll and shit like that, which would be wild. But they do got Drew Holiday to guard Dame. Like, man, I, man, this whole fucking league is fucking, like, lit, bro. Like, everything, like, everything is crazy, bro. Like, I'm not sure who's going to win, like, next season. Because, like, you got the Celtics out west. Well, not Celtics, sorry. The Suns out west, right? They got their big three. They super team over there. Then you got my Lakers. We got a we, we got a, a strong duo. We're also good, uh, you know, pieces around. Um, who else is out west? Oh yeah, you got the fucking uh, Warriors. They got Chris Paul, I guess, coming off the bench. <laughs> like I guess, uh, they still got the big three over there with Draymond, Clay, and Steph. Uh, what else? Who else in the west? I'm missing. I'm missing a few other people. Then also you got like you know a few heavy hitters like, uh. Uh, what's it called? You got some sleepers like the Kings. You got the Grizzlies out there. Y you know they're gonna make the first or tough round hard for whatever team make it there. I'm I'm definitely don't bet on them making the Western Conference Finals, but it's like you know they're gonna make it hard for some teams. Like the West is deep. Okay, the West is deep. Then you got niggas on the East side. Uh, the Heat. The Heat is down bad, bro. They couldn't get Drew Holiday. Like they had a terrible off season. Like, basically, they just lost pieces from last year, bro. They lost Gabe Vincent and Max Struess. Like, what the fuck, bro? Pat Pat Riley, hold that L, bro. You, like, you didn't do shit to help Jimmy. You didn't do shit. The Celtics made some moves. The fucking Bucks made some moves. Uh, uh, who else made some moves on the East? Um, I think that's it. That I could think of off the top of my head right now. Yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. I think that's it. That's all I can think of off the top of my head right now, but... Bro, this NBA season gonna be lit. This NBA season is gonna be lit. Like, bro, so much player movement happened like just before the season. Like, bro, it's wild. It's wild. But you know, like, comment, subscribe. Suggest anything else you want to write too. You know, down below in the comments. But check it out and next one.